Good morning, Vietnam. Well, I'm not going to talk about my trip to Vietnam, but what I'm going to talk about today is what I learned, what I learned from this trip. I'm talking about immigration and customs, going to Vietnam and coming back to the Philippines. So what we talk about, stay with me. Let's first start when we came from the U.S. to the Philippines. This was back in February, which is the first time we came in since the pandemic. So obviously, during the pandemic, there were a lot of confusion uh, regarding certain requirements and such. Now let's talk about the QR code. There was no question about QR code or what they call the e-travel when you are arriving in the Philippines. But yet, both foreigners and Filipinos, okay, keep this in mind, both foreigners and Filipinos, children, no exception, they are required to register for e-travel to arrive in the Philippines. Well, if that is the case, how come they were not asking for the QR code when I checked in? They said, well, because once you input your information in the system, it's in the system, and once they key in the passport number that you present, everything is already up there. Now, the only time they will ask you for the QR code is if they cannot find it in the computer. Then they will ask you, did you fill out the e-travel thing? And if you say, yeah, okay, show it to me, and then they're going to scan it, and see where, 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 where it lies to locate but unless there is a problem you will not even be asked so don't think just because you were not asked that it is not required now keep in mind my wife is an American citizen I am a dual citizen so what I'm telling you is exactly the same thing foreigner or not you are required to register for e-travel now, if there's any one of you who did not register at all and you were able to come in, tell me. Because then I will be interested to know if that in fact is true. Because some people say, gee, they did not even ask me. It doesn't mean that you don't need it. It's, that means the information is already there. Now, let's talk about I declare. Well, they said Terminal 3 will not be subject to the new system called I declare. That's only for Terminal 1. For Terminal 3, they will give you a paper uh, customs declaration if, if you have something to declare. And when, when, I, when I came in, that, that was February 24th, I came in uh, on Terminal 3 because I, I was taking, uh, what did I take? Uh, Qatar. Qatar. So they did not have any form and in fact I just went through the lane that says nothing to declare that's it so what is this I declare for now let's talk about going to Vietnam well again to depart just like when you arrive you need to have e-travel my wife had a US passport and a visa because American citizens are required a visa in Vietnam. I had a Philippine passport and no visa is required. So two different situations, right? Well, when we checked in at the PAL uh, ticket office, the agent asked me if I have a green card. I said, no, I'm a dual citizen. She said, don't show your U.S. passport in Vietnam or you will be required to have a visa. That is strange because I'm Filipino citizen and I'm entitled to get in, but I'm not going to argue about that. So that's a tip that this agent said. Make sure you don't show your U.S. passport. So believe it or not, that's what you should do. But anyway, that was my plan because <laughs> I'm a Filipino citizen. So what, what do they need a, a U.S. passport for? So make sure you don't show it. 
this is if when you're going to Vietnam and I guess if you're going to any country not just Vietnam you don't really need to show your US passport if you have a Philippine passport she also asked me if I paid travel tax and I said no because I'm supposed to be exempt as a dual citizen as long as I stay in the Philippines for less than a year I am not supposed to be subject to travel tax if I stay more than one year then I will be subjected to travel tax <laughs> and she said well, okay, I just want to know if you know that. That's funny. Why, why will she want to know? She's giving me a test. <laughs> now, let's get to the immigration <clears throat> when we left Vietnam. See, the immigration, no question was asked whatsoever. My wife showed her U.S. passport and Vietnam visa. I showed my, only my Philippine passport, and that's it, again. We did not have to present e-travel. Everything was already in the system. Okay, does not mean that it is not required. Let's talk about return from Vietnam, return to the Philippines. When we checked in at PAL, ticket office, they asked to see if we had e-travel. In Vietnam, immigration, uh, I just showed my uh, Philippine passport, my wife, her US passport no problems since they have no such thing as e-travel now on arrival in the philippines <clears throat> in the philippines announcement was made by the airline that only those keep in mind this is terminal one supposed to be i declare will be required they did not mention anything and i'm going to tell you why i think they did that they made an announcement, they showed a form, and they said, okay, I will give this form to anybody who has something to declare. Only if you have something to declare. If you have nothing to declare, you don't need any form. Okay? And they did not say anything about the I declare. But I will tell you why I think that's the case. They have a problem. That explains when we arrived uh, that we did not have to go through customs and it's because we have nothing to declare that explains that which is the experience we had the first time we came to the U to the philippines uh, back in february on the way to immigration there are signs all over the place about e-travel and everyone should have e-travel and everybody had their smartphones open looking at apparently e-travel but when I look to see if anybody is showing this QR code on their smartphone, they were not even looking. They were not even looking at this QR thing. Because once you, once you register for e-travel, the system already has your information. And once you give them their pass, your, your passport, the system will pull out everything that you, you put in. Remember what I said? If and when they cannot find your record that is when they'll ask you if you registered on e -travel. to summarize this everyone needs to register on e travel foreigner and filipinos bring your qr code hard copy or uh, on the smartphone but don't expect them to ask since they will already have the information that you keyed in to your computer when you register. I declare <laughs> does not work. And, and let me explain to you what happened. Last night I was at the hotel in Vietnam and I was trying to complete this I declare. And when I, when, when I got to submit it, it won't submit it. You know why? Because it lacks one information and that is my date of birth. And when I enter my date of birth, I cannot enter it manually. I have to click something, an icon, that's going to bring up a calendar, monthly calendar. But since I was born some 70 years ago, I had to keep on flick a and, and, and hitting that icon, icon, icon about 800 times. I mean, I did not do it 800 times, but I said, this is ridiculous. I could have just as easily do it by typing in the date in a matter of seconds. And no, I have to do it. So bottom line, 
I said, the hell with this. I did not even bother. I said, when I get them, I will talk to them and that set the record straight as to what's wrong with their system. Well, lo and behold, when I got on the plane, no such thing as I declare. No such thing, on, not even on Terminal 1, because supposed to be in effect in Terminal 1. And the reason is, the system is screwed up. So, they just give you a manual form for you to make your declaration if you have anything to declare. And if you have nothing to declare, you just go straight to the nothing to declare line and you just go out. And that explains why we had that experience back in February. See, none of this is being told. Not even in the social media. It's not social media's fault, but it is the government's fault. They have to communicate all this. If once they require it, then now they don't require it. Or if they, they ask for it, they, if they don't ask for it, why is it not? So that people will understand. People will understand. I can't understand this government. I really can. But anyway, it's a simple thing now. From, from what I can see. But of course, until they make a change again. Maybe once they fix that problem on the I declare, they will enforce it again. I would prefer for them not to, to, to enforce that. Because it's working fine. Just asking people to fill out a manual form if they have anything to declare. Otherwise, don't even bother. It's most practical that way. So, guys, I learned a lot from this trip from an immigration standpoint, both immigration and the customs. Why people are confused, why they feel they need not do it if they are a foreigner, why, why this and why that, why they don't even go through uh, customs. That explains the whole thing. So guys, I hope you enjoy this uh, video and please do share this with other people so they don't get confused. And now I fully understand what's going on until it's changed again by the Philippine government. Thank you so much for watching. I'll appreciate it if you click like down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thank you. God bless. And make it a great day.